one month of learning game development, one month of developing a game, and one month, I mean, one eternity of the shame by looking back at your game and seeing all the mistakes you've done during this period. So, the long story short, I started learning the game development at the end of the March by taking an exam course. And I was just about to finish it when they announced their game jam. I knew that I would have a lot of exams and projects on my because I'm a student right now, but having a month to develop a game would really help me, and so I've joined. I think that this video will be more about what you should not do during the game jam and may just see the progress of my game, of this game. So let's just begin. On the 1st May, they announced the theme on their Discord server, and it was the time. I immediately started to do what other people do, write down all the ideas on paper too in order to find out which topics and themes I should not use for my game. In different time travel related stuff that I immediately put off because I knew that I wouldn't be able to do something like that for a game jam, I had ideas about eternity, running out of time, seasons, delays, reincarnations, shifting time back, like in break, control of time, actually controlling the time, like the clock watches or something like that. Um, do something precisely in time, like piano tiles, being synchronized with something, consuming time, like eating it, yeah. But at the end of the day, I just had the idea for a name of my game, no time to shine, something like that. And I decided to use it because I thought that connecting the theme of time with candles and how they are running out of time might become a good idea. I thought for a bit and this is what I wrote down as my short description. So it would be a platformer puzzle, adventure, where I need to remember all the details because I can turn on and turn off the light to see different elements, but when I turn on the light, it also decreases the time which I have. So when I'm in dark mode, the time stops. At the same time, everything stops as well. So when I finished doing this, I launched a Unity and started a new project. I started by trying to find the tile map related stuff in Unity. I couldn't find it for like five minutes. Oh, here it is. So when I finally did it, I started by doing some basic stuff. Play with the size of the player, its gravity and mass. Wrote a simple script for the movement, like to left to right. I also knew that since my character will be a candle, it needs to have a light surrounding it. And the problem which I found immediately when I started the project was that each frame it was allocating 36 bytes just using this light. And I'm not sure if it's a normal situation. I also wanted my character to turn on the little light when he lands on the ground and to achieve it I used physics overlap function which checks if my character collides with a certain layer mask. Then I actually changed this light to a bubble because I wanted it to have a circle shape. I don't want it to appear so sudden. So I wrote a simple logic that gradually increased and decreased its size. I'm not sure why, but I decided to make the enemy, even though I didn't have the actual game or some levels to play. So I made the enemy that follows my player when it's in light mode and stops when it's in dark mode. But something initially went wrong, like really wrong. I thought that I want to improve my jump because I wanted my character to j uh, have a lower gravity when he jumps and a higher gravity to land so that he won't spend a lot of time levitating in the air. I also changed the camera distance to have more space for the level, and I've added a coyote sign for my character so he won't fall immediately when he leaves the ground. Then I've started writing a logic for the actual levels, so I wanted style maps to disappear when the light goes off, but then appear again when I turn on the light again. And then I made a scene manager that launches the next level when I collide with the exit. Since the game is about time, I decided to make a timer and I just used the fill component of the image to show the current time that the player has. And I've added the function to restart the level. 
but I really wanted to try to make my art because I wanted to see how my final game would actually look like and that's why I decided to start drawing my character. So I knew that it would have two versions of each animation, one for light mode and another for dark mode. So I decided to use the Illustrator and not because I'm a professional at Illustrator, actually it was my first time of using it, some versions of my character on the paper. I had several adjustments, as you can see I decided to increase the size of his eyes because I really think that eyes are the most important part and I've also changed the size of his shoulders, I made them look more like a rectangular shape as an actual candle and I also replaced the humanish legs with the candle lid. So once I finished I've imported my character to Illustrator and started to make the outline of my character by drawing on top of my draft. When I was pretty happy with my results for both light and dark mode, I just imported these two images to After Effects. And no, not because I was a professional at After Effects, actually I didn't use it for years. So by playing with the position and rotation of each of my elements of head, legs and different parts of my body, this is the animations that I came up with for the idle, run and jump. After finishing all of them, I've imported them as sprite sheet into Unity and straight away I had some problems with them. The problem was that when I was changing the state of my character from the light mode to dark mode and vice versa, the animation that was playing was wrong, especially this dance. And I've made the script that substitutes my animations. So for example, when I'm jumping in a dark mode and suddenly shift to light mode, it would still have a jump animation, but for light mode. And then I also fixed the landing animation so that when I land on the ground, it would show me the right animation of landing. I also decided to use particles, not just because I wanted my character to emit them, but also because I always wanted to Try the object pool by myself. I've heard about it many times but didn't have a chance to try it out. So I watched some tutorials on YouTube and here is the object pool that I came up with. Then I started drawing my tiles for the game. And this time I've used Photoshop because I'm more familiar with it. So I've made different types of cakes and then drew an outline for my tile map. I've also drawn the chains, the torches and all the other sprites and here are all of them. Actually I don't think that I've added more during the later parts of the stages of my development. After finishing some of my levels, I gave it to my younger brother to playtest and it was a really good decision because actually my brother spent a lot of time even on tutorial levels and couldn't find out what to do and I understood that for now, my game was not intuitive at all. I've also started to implement the chains and torches in my game. Initially, I decided to use different separate tile maps for each of my objects, like for chains and torches, which I wanted to switch on and off separately from the rest of the tile maps. But I realized that it's a bad decision, because what if I wanted to influence only part of these tiles? And then I remembered that there, are, there is a thing called the brush prefabs. So I made the brush prefab for both chains and torches and it made the development of my game much easier. I didn't have a playable game yet, but still decided to write a music for my game. So I decided to use the Apple Studio to make my music. And I know that there are many other applications like Voice Cub, uh, I don't remember, which are simpler and much more beginner friendly than the Apple Studio. But I knew that in the long run I want to understand how it works and that's why I decided to start it immediately and not just waste my time. And i also seen some people do a crazy orchestral stuff in Apple Studio and that's why I decided to use it. Hey, don't tell me that I won't be able to do this. I will!
Initially, the progress for my game was really slow because I had different projects and the preparations for my math test. Please, just help me. But even then I was trying to do at least something every day. For example, I finally added the platforms to my game. And the problem was that when I did it, all three platforms was affected by the script. And the solution I found was just to compare the position of the actual place where the bubble appears and compare it with the position of the rest of the platforms. And if they are not similar, these platforms won't be affected. I had some optimization issues during the testing of my game, and that's why, for the sake of the curiosity, I decided to look at the profiler. And there are the solutions that I, firstly, I use the cached references and variables, including the wait for second. I also changed all my position and rotations to local positions. Since I was using a lot of delegates and events, I discovered that Every time I subscribe and unsubscribe from them, it allocates garbage. And since my logic was in on enable and on disable by using the enable function, I just subscribe and unsubscribe and as a result allocate a lot of garbage. And that's why I moved this logic to awake and on destroy part of my code. I replaced almost all my coroutines with update manager, which is dumb because events actually allocate garbage too. I've replaced all the tag functions with compare tag. Actually, I'm not sure why this is considered a better option, but it actually worked, so who cares? I was shocked, but it actually worked, and there were much less garbage allocated during the game. Then I made some new platforms, for example that one which I called the one-way cake, which allows you to go from one side, but doesn't allow to do the same from the opposite one. To achieve that, I just used the 2D effector. I finished all my projects and started to work on my game more seriously. And I had a lot of improvements since then. For example, I removed a lot of my old levels. I made a lot of new levels. Besides having the falling platforms, I've also added the rising platforms and the moving platforms. I also wanted to give some visual feedback to the player. And that's why I made the outline for spawning and despawning positions of my platform and also the particles which appear when the platform disappears and becomes invisible. And I also made the outline for the path which my moving platforms have, so even in dark mode the, uh, the player will, will be able to know exact path of each of the moving platforms. I also made these slides flicker so the player would pay attention to them. And I've also added a delay for my platform so that when they stop colliding with the bubble, they're still moving and some different minor adjustments for collisions, physics, and etc. At this time I've had only several days before the game jam would end, and I thought that it's time to change the timer for my game and make something more, something prettier and that looks cooler. The way it works is that it's separated into two parts, the flame and the actual body of the candle, and when the timer is decreased, it anchors the position of the flame to this candle, so it just would mimic the actual candle that melts down. I was never a professional video editor, but I was making a lot of simple videos with my friends. One single thing that I have learned during all these years is that audio matters. So I decided to record different sound effects for my game to basically make the game come alive. One thing I noticed is that once I finish the level, it immediately starts the next one. But I wanted to have some delay and telling the, car the player that the he actually managed to finish the level. So that's why I decided to slow down the time when he collides with the doors to make all the other music and sounds stop and at the same time start the game finished sounds. And one important thing was to block the abilities of the character because I found out that if you wanted to restart the game when it finished it would break my game and that's why I decided to block all the input from the player once he finishes the level. In theory I wanted my game to have different worlds, you know like with different versions of platforms, types of enemies, new mechanics, but in reality I only had one day before the game will be over. Oops. So I knew that I won't be able to make new levels 
but I still wanted to finish with the strong notes, and that's why I, I know it was a sudden decision, but I decided to make a boss battle. So I decided to use this black hole which I drew but didn't use in any of my levels. I thought that it was a smart solution to just use what I already did but didn't use for my game. So I actually used the same script and logic for the black hole which I made in the very beginning for my enemies. So I decided to make the black hole move slower when it was in a light mode but move much faster when I was in the dark mode because it was like it was more powerful during the dark. I've also made some new sounds for black hole. So the basic idea for a black hole and the whole fight was simple. And I thought that every time the player collides with a black hole, the black hole would consume your time, as opposed to when the black hole collides with a, your bubble light. And when it does, it takes away the life of the black hole. Somehow I still had some time before the end of the game jam. So I made the intro button which would expand when you... Oh, Jesus! So I made the intro button which expands when you hover over it and after making some descriptions, screenshots and an actual trailer for my game, I finally launched it on each IO. And you know what? This was one of the best feelings of my life. Because actually being able to search for your game and finding it among all the other games and now I understand these developers which say that you always need to finish your game and launch it somewhere, even if only some people would play it, because it really matters. So the link to check my game will be in the description. I would really appreciate if any of you play it and leave your feedback so that I will be able to improve in the future and, make, and don't make the same mistakes twice. Thank you for watching the video, I will see you in the next week.